Greetings there, my fellow tradesmen, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid. Episode 18, Plumbing and Bedding. Nothing can see in now from the bottom floor. As you can see, it's it, I can't see out either. It works both ways. And yeah, like technically there's like uncovered glass at the bottom there, but like that doesn't count. The sheets visually don't go from floor to ceiling, but like functionally they do. As far as the game's concerned. Character is a little exerted. So I am going to use one of these lovely chairs that I'm inevitably going to destroy just to rest. Actually, no. I'll take that back. I'm going to sit on the floor and read a book. Alright, there we go. I don't typically use exploits in the game. Um, so I don't even know off the top of my head whether the, um, the like, barricading... I, I think there is still some... The, uh, some furniture items that are non-destructible for zombies. Like, uh, but you'd have to look that up yourself, because those kind of exploits for perfect barricades, I just don't use. One could even make the argument that, like, using second floors with sheet ropes is like... I, I mean, it's not an exploit, but obviously removing access for the zombies is is perfect security. But I think, for me, I draw the line at, like, blocking zombies with, like, invincible furniture is just a bridge too far uh, for my own preference. But that's personal preference. It's just, it's when you're playing it as a single-player game, you know, play by your own rules. Whatever they may be. Well, I am getting kind of close to level six. You can probably tell why I didn't bother to try to grind the experience by hand. Because it is, um, it's, it's pretty slow. To do it without videotape aids. It really depends on your level of your comfort of grinding. For me, I try to limit the grind as much as I can for, for your benefit. Because I know it's not like the most intriguing content. So going to VHS stores and watching tapes is more palatable, I think, for you all than... than uh, spending four hours breaking down wood furniture. Which is meta, perhaps, but not fun to watch. So I'm getting pretty close to fully barricading up the windows here. There are other windows, I believe, into this building. But the front window uh, was obviously the biggest vulnerable point. And we're almost done getting rid of that big vulnerable point. Because of all the manual labor and everything, my character got really tired from all this work. So I'm going to call it for today, even though it's only 6 p.m., and spend my time doing something safer indoors because I don't want to risk um, getting in a fight 
because of how exhausted my character is. Because the more exhausted you are, the more likely you are to lose. And, uh, well, let's avoid that. When do we think 42 gets released? I have no idea. I mean, it's in, been in development, oops, since December 2021. So, you know, when it's ready. <laughs> I don't want them to rush it. I don't want them to release something bad. So, like, take whatever time they need, you know? Uh, one thing that I could do is uh, clean up my clothing. It's raining pretty hard. So using rainwater from the rain barrels to like clean the blood off myself um, and clean all my clothing is kind of fine because the rain barrels will fill back up. So just doing a little bit of laundry here. It's so like this rain barrel I drained from 160 to 74. That's how I used almost 100 points of water. But like, you know, I'll fill back up. Not too worried about that. Do I think they'll have animals? Well, so everything that's planned in the 42 launch is already publicized, so you can look it up yourself. But yes, farm animals is in amongst them. The way the the way they're approaching adding human NPCs is they want to work out the system to add just NPCs in general, and obviously animals is going to be less involved than adding people. So their first pass at NPCs will be uh, adding animals. Well, I look pretty, pretty good. Pretty clean. My clothing, of course, is like wet, but it's not... It, it dries pretty quick, as long as you're not out in the rain. Are there mods that make it more arcadey and less grindy to, to skill up? I don't know. You'll have to look that up yourself. Not ones I've used, but you can always change. I could have given myself the ability of fast learner, which allows you to learn faster um, or reduce the amount you know, there, there's a bunch of server settings to, ch to change. So if there's some aspect of uh, Zomboy you don't like, just look up um, at the server settings to see if there are dials for you to flip. Because more often than not, there will be. Uh, so the next book I want to read is the Electrician one. I like to try to get my Electrical up to level 3, but that's quite the grind. Electrical 3 allows you to move stoves around and... Uh, between that and mechanics, it will allow you to hotwire cars, so any car that you see can be a car that you own, which is kind of nice. Uh, some milk in the freezer is getting stale. Uh, stale milk is fine. It still can be used in farming. But just figured I'd mention that. So I am two thirds of the way to level six. Got it. It's a lot. But it is nice to have a fully barricaded bottom floor. Now, if I wanted to barricade up the second floor, these windows, um, either I would need a sledgehammer to break the handrail here. I think, if I'm not mistaken, these handrails are sledgehammer only. Yeah. Or build stairs to gain access to that because I can't barricade one floor up or add uh, blankets or, you know, sheets or whatever. So there's only so much I can do without carpentry level six allowing me to build stairs there or sledgehammer allowing me to demo the handrail so that I can start to build flooring. Uh, the bonuses for sleeping in a nicer bed. Uh, so really crummy beds will give you pain. And that could be a problem. So if you sleep on the floor or something like that, you're probably going to get some pain. And then the nicer beds allow you to like recover your, uh, your stamina. 
more efficiently. I'm going to keep collecting planks because once I have my carpentry level up to six, I'm going to need a whole lot of planks um, just to be able to uh, build the stairs themselves because they cost, I think, 15 planks. The easier, the probably the, the easier way to get planks, rather than, in, unless you have a ton of destructible furniture, uh, is to just cut down trees into logs, and then saw those logs into planks. You can kind of plane your own wood that way. Um, and logs can be bundled together with sheet ropes or regular rope to make them uh, pretty weight efficient to move around, which is nice. So, those chairs and lectern and shelving gave me about 400 XP, just to give you an idea of of uh, what the grind's like. So I'll definitely be able to finish to level 6 today. And that's big. Level 6, level six gives me stairs, and if I can... If I'm satisfied enough with just the regular sized rain barrels, which I am, um, I don't need to get to Carpentry 7. Carpentry 7 is what gets you the nicer rain barrels, but they're, they're not absolutely mission critical. So I'll put the planks here, because this is where I'm going to be building the stairs. We build the stairs from here up to the roof. The other advantage of the leveling up your carpentry is the uh, walls and uh, doors that you make will have more HP. When you level up carpentry or metalwork, the things that you build with carpentry and metalwork become stronger. There's also a, t uh, a trait that you can take that makes your, uh, your carpentry stronger as well. I don't particularly find that necessary though, I will add because in an ideal base build you probably shouldn't have walls or doors that need to tank, in my opinion, right? Like, if zombies are attacking your walls or doors, your design is already probably flawed unless you're going with the restriction of like, no second floors or something like that. Like, so some self-imposed did, you know, added restriction to make it harder for yourself. So the the trait points that like give you bonus HP, I don't find all that necessary, except for one there's one caveat, I will say which is garage doors. Um, so in the game if zombies break down your garage doors it's nice to have a, a door wide enough for cars to go in and out of, which is can be built, a double wooden door. And that requires Carpentry 6, and it's also really nice that those double wooden doors um, are tough, because they're required to obviously be at street level that zombies can get at. So that would be the only case where Carpentry level and HP for the construction that you make is is really essential um, so that you can make doors that uh, that don't get ripped apart by zombies in a heartbeat. So at this point, I have gotten all of the first floor uh, woodwork, for the most part, from Jenny's table. And I can either go upstairs the second floor of Jenny's table or like go next door somewhere else that has uh, uh, that has more woodworking 
So I think I'm going to go upstairs so that I can mark the uh, building off as fully looted. There's, um, there's still some food inside as well that I could cook up. There's like bacon and corn and things like that. So you can see the upstairs is not very big. It's just a... It's not like a full second story of this building. It's just a, a smaller section. But yeah, I've clearly been here. <laughs> Strict it clear. Here it looks like a pretty convincing loft of a restaurant. I've worked in a few restaurants and any every restaurant that had a second floor looked kind of like this. With like a bunch of strewn about bonus or bonus extra furniture. And like a small apartment. When you burn the midnight oil or you sublet or whatever. They're looking good. Nothing of concern here. So I'm going to strip the rest of the furniture. There's also like doors and beds. The beds, um, my chance to mess up a bed is still, it's only 37%, but I don't, I'm going right now just for the XP. That's my priority. Uh, but knowing that my chance to get like a nicer bed is is rather high, uh, I can definitely uh, consider it soon. Oops, I didn't mean to take pencil and nails in place. The uh, antique TVs, I don't think, I could be wrong, I don't have it memorized, but I don't think that you can take, uh, uh, they don't allow for VHS tapes. So whenever you're uh, looting a TV, if you need TVs, Make sure that they have a VHS uh, slot in them. Because there might be some TVs that, like, don't. Alright, I am completely full. I'm going to walk this planks back home. How close did I get? Oh my god. Alright, I'm going to dismantle a few extra things and just get all the way there. All right, this should be doing it. And there we go. Carpentry six. The grind is over. Um, Build stairs to the top roof. Build rain, barrels, and plum. So in order to plum, uh, you obviously need to be able to build rain barrels or have them. There are lootable rain barrels that do exist. And then uh, a pipe wrench. Without a pipe wrench, you can't plumb. I already have a pipe wrench, and it's also on my tracked items list for that reason.
It is possible to move rain barrels that you've already built, but they need to be empty first, which um, can take some effort, let's put it. So I usually don't move them unless I have to. So I'm going to put the stairs here. I like this spot. Looking good. So we go up. And here's the top roof. All the way up. Really added a lot of um, square footage, right? Because if I had if I had fences around the corners here and ropes down, it gives me a lot of ways to get out of my base. That's a very powerful tool. Um, it would also be helpful for me to measure out the kitchenette to figure out how many units away from the back wall it is so that I can um, plan to plummet properly. And it might be a little bit of trial and error. And to that end, I will say I find it uh, fairly useful, given that there's some trial and error involved, for it not to be raining when you're trying to plumb things. Because if it's raining, you can't move your uh, rain barrel around. Um, because it will constantly be filling up and you can't move items that have contents. Uh, but if it is, uh, if it's not raining, you can pour a little water into it, see if the plumbing had worked. And then if it didn't, you can like pull the water out back into, you know, a bottle or whatever, and then move it around. Uh, so just food for thought there. Uh, characters very tired. So it also might be a good time to rest. But if I did want to uh, mark it out, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to this wall. And then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 tiles back should be my rain barrel. Uh, rain barrels have a weird thing where Directly above won't work, but above and over one will. So if I build rain barrels one floor up, like here, 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 and here, they will all plumb to the center sink. So that's uh, that's sort of like a good design to go with. Um, and I'll show you that in prog process. But let's go ahead and get some f healthy food. My, my weight is starting to go up, so I'm going to start to eat more veggies in my diet so that I don't end up rotund. Yeah, you can also check the sink for its capacity, but um uh but my my point is if it's if it's raining, uh you can't move around your rain barrels. So building them in the rain kind of sucks uh, because if you pick the wrong spot, you're sort of stuck with it. So current priority is build rain barrels and plumb. That is reasonable to do in the remaining time I have. I do think I need uh, at least one more garbage or a few more garbage bags. So I might need to go digging around trash for trash bag. Oh, no, I have four. Perfect. I need ex at least four. And what I can do is I can. Um, I'll probably try to move some of the rain barrels I already have made. Um to save my, well, maybe not. I don't know. Because I could, like, empty this one out and move it. There's a lot of things I could do with water, like cleaning leather stripping for tailoring or cleaning extra clothing that I have. Uh, so I said 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13.
There we go. And I'll just add water from my water bottle um, uh, for demonstration purposes. Then have to go pick up the pipe wrench. Should be on my tool. Should be here. There it is. And plum chrome sink. See that option? That's what we want. Now, uh, there are six units of water. I guess I poured six and change it averaged up, but there's six units of water in that rain barrel up top. So I can use it to fill my empty bottle back up. That's the water I poured into it. So uh, the rain barrel above me is placed correctly. Uh, the advantage of plumbing, if you're wondering, like, hey, why the hell to do it? Any water that you pull from a plumbed sink, um, this will sound weird, is clean. So if the rain barrels fill up with rainwater, the water I pull from the sink is purified automatically. Meaning I don't need to boil it. That's the big advantage of plumbing. Um, you can plumb up to eight rain barrels to a sink. You can also plumb showers. You can plumb washing machines. Uh, anything that takes water, I think, for the most part, can be plumbed. So, it's very, very nice. And if you have enough rain barrels on your roof, you can start using water for whatever the hell you want. You can use water to clean your clothing. You can use water to wash yourself. You can use water for just, like, wherever the hell you want, because, you know, you'll, you have a functional, ridiculous amount of it. Um, so what I want to do is to move this rain barrel up there as well to double my uh, water capacity and leave these two here for, uh, gardening. Oh, hold on. There is a zombie breaking into my garage gate. So look before you leap. Make sure there's none waiting for me directly under the rope sheet. But let's not let a zombie break our door. Zombies. Sorry, plural. Let it out. Epic. Thank you for the uh, the reset. Any other zombies around? Nope. Okay, we're good. So in order to move that rain barrel I've already constructed, uh, using up the water would be ideal. And I want to use it well. So we have a bunch of these, like, uh, a lot of the spare clothing that is, like, dirty and bloody. And I can wash it in that water. So that's one pretty good use of water. And then the other is I have all these um, dirty leather strips which I could use to sew into my clothing for added protection, but they need to be clean leather first. Why? I don't know, uh, but they do. So between those two tasks, that will use a whole bunch of water. Oh, right, the clean strips won't work. But uh, I can wash clothing in it. And as you can see, the all clothing is grayed out, which means there's not even enough water in here to wash all clothing, so... This should use up all the water. So, old school laundry. Rain Barrel has three units of water now. Um, fill the empty bucket. And now it's empty, so I can pick it up. 
there's a chance to break it. So I took a risk in picking it up. Uh, but my carpentry is high enough level that it, sh you know, it's not a high chance. Now there is something to be said, uh, where my sink is because it's on the edge. If I wanted to add maximum amount of rain barrels, I would need to add floors here, here, and here. Cause the sink is directly below where I'm standing. So for there to be eight around it, three of those units don't have, you know, don't have anything below it. So if I really want to max out the amount that I have, um, I would obviously need to, uh, to add some floor or to move the sink or, or both. The other requirement for plumbing is the room that you're plumbing into needs to be fully enclosed, um, which is an odd requirement. I believe that's still a requirement though. And what that means is that, uh, it can't be like in the open. It can't be like a sink with just like a rain barrel above it out in the open. It needs to be a fully enclosed environment. So uh, keep that in mind as well. So the saucepan, uh, I'm gonna dump into the rain barrels up there so that I can move that back into the kitchen. And then I'm gonna get a nice rest. So if I did this correctly, because now there's two rain barrels, if I check the amount of water that it has, 20 and 28, I should have 48 units of water available to me uh, down there. If it was done correctly. Man, I've lost a lot of health carrying all my laundry. Let's put the laundry away first. It's literally killing me. It's kind of funny. I'll do the uh, leather strips later. Will it dry in a box like that? Yeah, it just dries over time. You can also stick it in a dryer. I live actually, this is a laundromat. So I could have walked it over to the laundromat, stuck it in a dryer and turned the dryer on. Um, I just didn't because it will dry passively anyway. So sink. Uh, let's see, I'm going to fill my water bottles. Okay, yep, it's plumbed to both. I used more than 20 units of water and there's still uh, plenty of water left over. Cool. So we have plumbing. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do here for the end of stream is um, to maybe get a bed. I'm going to microwave... Okay, lettuce. This is going to be so nasty. I'm going to microwave some lettuce uh, so that I can get rid of my hunger. Uh, but I'm going to be looking for some sort of bed I can move to my loft so I can sleep a bit better. That's the current priority. My carpenter skill is high enough that I think my success chance is going to be pretty good. Uh, let's get rid of the exertion, though. Just in case I run into zombies. Do a little reading. So I'm not all worn out. I ought to get in the habit of um, looking before I leap. In fact, putting the fences here and sheep ropes there would be uh, better. Because as I stand here, I'd be able to see zombies. So it would be like a an automatic check. So maybe I'll correct for that at some point. Also, I thought I heard some zombies around. So I'm going to do a, um, a quick perimeter check around the base to make sure that uh, there aren't any lurking. Because I, I thought I heard a growl. I, it could have been in my imagination, but better safe than sorry.
And now my uh, weight's at 80 and holding. So my diet of raw lettuce and ice cream has worked. <laughs> Very gross. Nope, this is my imagination. No zombies around. There's a few zombies, like, in the street and around. So, uh, I can, before I forget, we have completely looted Jenny's, the upstairs and downstairs, so marked off. Yeah, that's Jenny's. If there was extra time, one other thing that I would have liked to do is to go over to uh, the bar and try to get some bourbon bottles, because bourbon bottles make for very good water bottles. Very high weight to water capacity ratio. Which is super counterintuitive, but that's the way it is. So, headed to the apartments above, book naked and, uh, and fashionable. I've been up here already. It's not to say that it's necessarily safe. There could have been zombies that wander in, but I've already been in these apartments and cleared them out. So, lower likelihood that there'd be zombies up here. And yeah, let's go for a double bed. Oh, I got it. Nice. So a double bed uh, breaks into four parts. And, um, the way it works is if, let, let's say it didn't, and it broke, well, what would have, what would have happened is, like, I would have gotten parts, like, let's say, one out of four and four out of four, and you can piece similar furniture back together. So if I had a, if I wasn't as lucky, and I broke it, I could go to, like, four different oak beds and dismantle all four of them, try to pick them up, and then piece them back together uh, as a Franken bed. It makes no difference. But uh, in this case, I got all four pieces first try. The double beds um, only break down into two pieces, so you're, they're easier to move, and there's a, less of a likelihood that you break them because there's fewer pieces to break, because it's a chance to break each attempt. Well, sweet. We got a nice, large bed. And I'm not going to be able to put it back together until I have uh, each piece. So maybe I'll put the bed over in this corner. I'm also, at this point, pretty surprised I have not run out of power. We are on day 20, and I still have running power, which is pretty remarkable. Trucking life, now that you've subbed in advance, please don't quit streaming. Don't worry. It's it's my livelihood. It's, uh, it's people like you that, well, simply put, keep me employed. Uh, and I have a wife and kids, so I don't intend to, you know, be, uh, the homeless. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll keep streaming. That's a, that's a near guarantee. Oh, peanut butter. Yeah, I'll stop for peanut butter and maple syrup. Yeah, I might might still be a fat kid at heart. <laughs> I may or may not have consumed both of those things in real life in the last 24 hours. Sort of. Maple flavored cereal, to be fair. And also peanut butter.
can't believe my nimble. Oh, man. All that fighting, and I've only leveled up less than half a level. Nimble is not quick to level up. In my opinion, because of how powerful Nimble is, Nimble is essentially the speed at which you can backpedal when you're fighting. Because of how strong that is, once it hit, once you backpedal as fast as zombies can advance, making fighting very easy, horde fighting very easy. Um, my point is, uh, when I think the, for, for, in my opinion, like getting your Nimble, you know what? I'm gonna put it here. There we go. All right, we got a lovely double bed. And then I can pick up this uh, this lazy chair and uh, park it right in front of the TV. And I'll move this desk chair to in front of the ham radio, and I'm gonna move the ham radio. You might not like it, but this, my friends, is peak base building. I got running power, I got running water, I have storage. I need more storage shelves, to be fair. I have, I've got a whole bunch of, you know, actually, let me, uh, let me tidy these up. In case I have company over, uh, you know I, I don't want them to see my uh, my non-secured gun collection. That that would just be embarrassing. Oh, you know, okay. I have more guns than I have storage for guns, so I'm gonna have to put a few on the ground. Uh, actually, uh, being a Kentuckian, I'm not actually from Kentucky, but the game takes place in Kentucky. Uh, you know, a bed gun, just in case. You know. Because, you know, I, I would put it under my pillow, but there aren't really pillows in this game. All right, there we go. And uh, I will, as if it was designed, put my crowbar here. In case the ham radio needs some percussive maintenance. And uh, we'll, we can pretend it's a propane-powered ham radio. Hank Hill would be so happy about that. In fact, uh, I'll go, oop, nope, nope, don't pick that up. I want the, no, oh, I said don't pick that up. Dang it. Put the whiteboard back. Take the battery charger. I'll even put the battery charger. Uh, what, you can't, you just drop it on the ground? Okay. If, if all that you can do is drop it on the ground, I guess I'll put it back. You can't place it nicely. And then this chair. No! Take the chair! Oh, what are you doing, guy? Pick the chair up. If you hit R, you can cycle between the things you're picking up. So, I keep trying to pick up the... the. I don't want the whiteboard, but I keep grabbing the whiteboard. Uh, let's put a black office chair. I don't know. Why over here? Seems reasonable for some for some reason. Well, yeah, my base is coming together. Definitely coming together. And that, my friends, is uh is where I am gonna leave off. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 10th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow zombie survivors.